Hi, I'm Bill Duffin and welcome to the May edition of the Forensic Update. Rarely, if ever, are crime scenes neatly contained. Evidence can be collected from miles away, or as happened in the case of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing, it can be transported from the scene to several different hospitals. The bombing created a unique situation for the three hospitals tasked with treating the victims while simultaneously preserving shrapnel and projectiles as forensic evidence. With no clear guidelines, a set of ad hoc protocols were used to aid in gathering evidence for the still active investigation. A team of Boston area pathologists, FBI representatives, and the Massachusetts Office of the Chief Medical Examiner worked together shortly after the attack to develop a much needed set of guidelines. The unique guidelines allow physicians to work to save the patient, while one predetermined pathology assistant or resident and one attending physician act as the point of contact with law enforcement agencies, collecting and preserving critical evidence for the investigation. The full report is published in the Archive of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine. The Department of Forensic Science in Virginia just hit a major milestone, 10,000 hits against the Commonwealth's DNA database. Created in 1989, it was one of the first state-level DNA data banks to house DNA profiles from criminal cases. To date, Virginia's database has nearly 431,000 samples collected during the last 26 years. CODIS is the FBI program supporting the criminal justice DNA databases. There are many different kinds, ranging from the local to state to the national CODIS database. Our forensic biologist, Rob O'Brien, explains the difference between them. So there are three levels in the CODIS system. There's the LDIS, ESDIS, and ANDIS. LDIS is for the local database, which would be housed at, let's say, a police station, and they will collect samples that enter into that database, and they will have their requirements that they meet, that a sample must meet to get to the LDIS level. If there are samples that are within there that meet the requirement to get to the state level, then those will be moved up into the ESDIS system, which will be governed by the state police force. For example, in Florida, it will be the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And then you have ENDIS, which is a national database, which is held by the FBI. Unlike what you see on TV, the CODIS database stores only DNA profiles which consist of a series of numbers. In order to get a person's identity associated with the profile, the laboratory that found the hit has to contact the lab that originally entered the matching profile to verify and coordinate information. From there, the law enforcement agencies may have enough documentation to get authorization to collect a sample from the suspect that will confirm the identification. May is Military Appreciation Month, and here's a story to honor the occasion. The Department of Defense has announced plans to identify the 388 Americans killed on the USS Oklahoma. The iconic ship sank in the attack on Pearl Harbor nearly 74 years ago. The unidentified sailors and Marines are currently interred in the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific in Honolulu. Deputy Defense Secretary Robert Work cited that advancements in forensic science have made it possible to ID those service members and honor them with a full military burial. Identification work will be done by the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency. Serving the defense community is a big part of our work here at NFSTC, and we'll be at the Special Operations Forces Industry Conference, or SOFIC, May 19th through the 21st in Tampa, Florida, showcasing training and equipment to benefit today's warfighter. If you're in town, stop by booth 419 to get a 360 look inside our mock crime scenes and interactive displays. But don't fret if you can't make it. We've got it all online at our virtual booth at www.nfstc.org slash 15. That'll wrap up this episode. For more about stories we've covered on this and previous shows, visit our As Seen on the Forensic Update page at nfstc.org. From all of us here at NFSTC, I'm Bill Duffin, and thanks for watching. <laughs>